So on today's episode, I want to kind of do something a little bit fun, a little bit different. Um, this is more of an observation and sharing a perspective of martial arts because, you know, as we study different arts across different styles, we see that oftentimes the same ideas are done but different ways. So recently I was watching other channels and watching how other styles perform and study their power principles. And basically a power principle is how your body generates power in your strikes. Because I mean, individual parts of our body are strong. So I can stand here and punch him, punch the attacker with just my arm, might generate some power, but not as much as if you put your whole body into it. So I was just kind of watching how other people do it and I noticed that a lot of the concepts were there, but they were categorized differently or they were explained differently or a completely different perspective. So I just thought this would be fun to share how we do it in American Kempo and invite all of you to discuss how you guys learn it. So in American Kempo, we have three basic power principles and they are backup mass, gravity or gravitational marriage and torque. And the concept is basically simple. The whole idea is, you know, an individual body part can be strong, but to get a full impact and effectiveness, you need to put your whole weight and energy behind it. So in the concept of backup mass, it's literally translated as to you're using the mass of your body to back up your weapon. If I was gonna elbow him, just standing still and just flip my arm out, I don't generate a whole lot of power. You know, I might be able to check him a little bit and might do a little something, but it's not full power. So what I'd want to do is put my whole body weight into it. So instead of just standing here, if I were to drive into it, it generates much more power because now you're putting kinetic energy and momentum into the strike. So that's backup mass. Torque is basically twisting, rotational energy. So if you took a rubber band and you twisted it and you let it go, what happens? It unwinds. You're building up energy that way. So in the context of a strike, if I were to stand still and just deliver a strike to the body, just standing here, okay, I can generate some power. But how much power can I generate if I rotate into it? So rotating your whole body weight so you twist, you drive into it. A round kick is a great example. With a round kick, you don't just lift that leg up and kick. You twist your hips and that leg snaps out, gets the power you need. We also break torque down into two categories in tempo. We have direct and indirect. And basically what that means is direct rotation is, if I'm standing right here, I'm rotating towards the attacker. This is a deep penetrating strike. I'm rotating and delivering a full strike into the body. So it's a certain hit into it. Then we have indirect, which means you're rotating away. This is kind of more for like exiting moves, you're escaping, you're leaving, but it's kind of more of a whip strike. So it's not just here, you're kind of doing a whip. So that's direct, direct rotation and an indirect rotation. The last one is gravity or gravitational marriage. This one is basically the same principle as, as backup mass, but instead of going forward, we're going on the downward trajectory. And I'm gonna lower this dummy for a little bit on this one because this one's more effective, say you've, say you've thrown a front kick to your opponent and you've actually canceled their height, they're bending forward, so they're gonna be a little bit lower. You're not gonna be able to do much gravitational strikes on someone who's standing above you. So, so imagine I came in with a kick and I'm landing, I wanna kinda of drop a hammer fist maybe across his neckline. If I stand right here, okay, not bad. If I rotate into it, definitely get some power. But in the context, if I'm coming off another technique and I'm landing, I don't wanna just go kick, land, strike. I'm losing power, I'm losing momentum. My body's already coming down on a downward path. Why not use it? So instead of just kick, land, strike, I would kick and strike with the landing. Kick, strike with the landing. Use that little bit of extra boost can, can kind of make a difference of the effect working or not. Those are the three main principles we have. Backup mass, gravitational marriage, and torque, with torque being indirect and direct. It's important to not only be powerful with your strikes, but you gotta be able to control that power. You can be the coolest badass out there just doing these powerful strikes, but if you can't control it, you're not, you're not quite where you should be. Um, I was at a class once, a visiting dojo. My instructor and I were working out together and we had a guest come in and he was a black belt in some other art. I don't even know what it was, but we were doing drills and we were doing hard drills, soft drills, but the whole time he was going full power, full power each time, which is cool. It has its applications, but when you're trying to work something out, break something down, practice it, sometimes you want to take it slow and work with it. Well, he wouldn't do it. And my instructor basically said, dude, you know, take it a little bit light on this. We're just kind of demonstrating. And his answer was, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't control my power. I kind of answered that. If you're a black belt, you can't control your power. My instructor says, well, then you're not a black belt. You know, 
When you're at that level of proficiency, you have to be able to regulate your energy. You need to be in control. So once we teach the power principles, we also like to do drills where you stand with your partner and we kind of like stand right where you're gonna make contact with like a reverse punch. And we take turns going back and forth and basically the idea is you start off throwing a punch and stopping as close as you can without actually hitting them. And you go back and forth and you try to just graze their shirt. And as you go from there, you add a little bit more, a little bit more. And of course the other partner works on conditioning, tightening their stomach and eventually, you know, we start making some contact. Because the truth of the matter is, once you become proficient with your strikes, you need to be able to regulate your power. So you should be able to go from 0% contact to 100% contact and every step in between. If you can't control it, you need to work on that because you're not at the level you should be if you cannot control your strikes. Now, for those of you familiar with Ed Parker, he was blazingly fast and he did lots of demonstrations where he utilized a lot of power. However, if you YouTube um, some footage with him and Frank Trejo, and I'll try to put the link in the description below, there's a really cool demo that he did several years back where Frank Trejo stood there and Ed Parker was doing all sorts of strikes and he was going full power, but he stopped right at the grazing point. And he did like, not just one or two, it was like a flurry. It was really impressive to watch. And you see Frank Trejo just standing there waiting for it to hit, but the control was immaculate. So. That's just kind of what we teach. So we learned the three basic power principles and then we learned control. So basically that was just kind of a fun drill I wanted to share with you. It's an observation I've noted. I'm always interested to hear other perspectives. So I'm asking all of you now, how do you learn it? Those of you who are studying martial arts in your system, what power generation do you have and how is it taught? I'm really curious to know your perspective and your story. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate you supporting our channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. And be sure to click that bell notification so that you are always up to date with new episodes. Thank you so much.